Would you join us? Get your Bibles out. We're going to be talking about marriage, family, relationships. Uh, this will apply to you if you're human. You might not be married, um, but everyone, we all could use some good scriptural guidance and revelation on relationships. So we're excited to be reading. We're going to dive into some different scriptures. We're going to be talking about three different dynamics that will help us and empower us in our marriage, in our families, and in our relationships. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. So my wife's going to open up in prayer, uh, and then we're going to read some scripture, and we're going to go for it. So would you join us? Amen. Father, thank you for every person yes, God. watching this video. I pray oh, right now that you would just infuse life, hope, resurrection in every heart to hear what you have to say to us yes. right now about relationships, marriage, and family. I thank you for your word that speaks truth, that brings healing yeah. and restoration. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, let's start. Um, how about I read this? Awesome. And then let's talk about the first thing. And you can tell everybody what that is in a moment. We're going to start. I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. Come on, somebody. I'm going to read Ephesians chapter 5. Um, and I'm going to start at verse 22. Would you like to read this? No, you, you want read. me to read it? Okay. Uh, wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. Mm, you hear what I say, girl? Mm, you heard? You I read did. a word? You need to get to the next verse. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> For as the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Verse 24, therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Verse 25, oh, this is a good one for mm -hmm. me right here. Yes. Huh? Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also, Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present to her himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Verse 28, so husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church. So good. So good. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Oh, so good. Ending at verse 32. Powerful so stuff. Amen. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about I think it'd be uh, interesting to unpack what it means to be the husband, to be the head of the wife, um, because there is a uh, there's a lot of confusion on that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we have uh, we're supposed to, the man's the head of the household. And there's a little confusion on that, too. I think that there is a uh, partnership in managing the household, yeah, but there is an authority that the wife has in the home. But what does this word head mean? Mm -hmm. But let's talk about the number one thing, which is realignment. So if you're taking notes, write this down. These are different areas that will empower us to be successful in our marriage, um, also in our relationships and with our children, yes. family yeah. relationships. Yeah. And the first thing we're going to talk about is realignment. Matter of fact, if you're on here live right now, just type it in or you're watching it later, type in realignment. If you're watching this on Facebook um, and uh, let's dive into this go yeah, ahead baby so let's start so I think what we have to first understand is aligning our hearts to what I believe and what we believe is the biblical principle of um, the the values in our lives first obviously mm, should be our relationship good. with God is first yeah. and foremost the number one value but then comes our marriage and then our family and then everything else. And I think so many times so when we get that mixed up, things become out of order and it's room for chaos in yeah. our lives. And so um, even teaching our children that they're not first before our marriage, but our marriage is That's first right. That's right. before our children. And yeah. even as pastors in ministry. Ministry in, is not first. Ministry is not first. And right. we've been in full-time ministry for now for Long almost time. 12 years. Yeah. And 
ministry is not first. If That's you're right. in my church or in a part of any of our network churches, you're not first to right. this. Yeah. This is first. That's right. And so well, I our relationship with the Lord, like, yes. of course, we we are talking about marriage and family, but my relationship with the Lord um, is going to be lived out in how healthy this yeah. is. Amen. And so even sometimes I think, well, God's first and, and people will use that as an excuse. Jesus is my first love. And then they'll neglect the love of their spouse. Mm -hmm. And that's an inappropriate way to to talk about the love of God for us and for our love for him. If I love God and I am returned, if I'm my first love, Jesus is healthy, then it's going to be shown in the way I love my spouse okay. and the way I value my spouse. Yeah. So of course God is first, but marriage and then family and our, our, you know, our relationships with our kids, ministry flows out of that. That's right. We've always, we've been saying this for years, healthy ministry flows out of healthy marriage and healthy family. Yeah. And you can't compartmentalize it. And I can't compartmentalize my relationship with God and my relationship with you. Yeah. Because if I'm going, I got to spend time in prayer. And I go and I spend time in prayer, but I neglect and I'm not cherishing and loving you. Then my prayer is in vain. Mm. Because sometimes we'll replace what we think is spiritual activity with a distraction from doing what we're created to do. So I'm just as spiritual, and if not more, by taking my wife on a date and cherishing her or taking her Preach. shopping. Preach. She likes that. <laughs> and uh, love language. Come on, somebody. But uh, I think that's important as yes. we talk about this. Like, yes, Jesus is first, always. God is first, our relationship with him. Because if I love Jesus uh, because he first loved me, let me just make that clear. But if my love for him is is uh, is is greater than my love for my wife, then I'll always have more than enough love yeah, for my wife. So but I can't love him if I'm not first being loved and allowing him to love me, and that overflows to the people in my life. So, so it's so important when we talk about this. Very, very, very. We've good. learned this yes. the hard way. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like you, you'd mentioned about, uh, you know, like marriages being strong so that they can be healthy parents. Yeah. Let's talk about that because yeah. that's a that's a powerful powerful truth. I mean, how many times do you see uh disarray or confusion or chaos or let me just say it like this, there some some people have a place to sleep at night. They have a home or they have a place to sleep but they don't have a home because it's not a refuge. Yeah. Cuz there's chaos. Yeah. Kids rule the household. Yeah. Kids are rebellious. How many like we know that we can't tolerate rebellion with love and discipline, but if our relationship isn't healthy, if the marriage isn't strong, I cannot, if, if I'm not a, a strong husband with my wife, I can't be a good dad. Yeah. And so let's talk about yeah. those boundaries. What does that mean? I think so many times when, when we talk about having children, we feel like, oh, we're a circle of a family and our children become the center of that circle. And that's not mm. a healthy way to look at mm. having children. Children do not become the center of your world. Children become a part of your world. Right. And um, and if you teach them that, even from an early age, they will understand that, that as as important as they are in your family. And my children mean the world to us. I yeah, mean, they're, our they're the so focus of our love, us. but everything doesn't revolve around them. Exactly. <laughs> and the Bible has given us so much authority. And I'm going to just speak to wives for just a moment mm. i think sometimes we relinquish the authority that god's given us in our home because um we misinterpret what the bible says about headship yeah you know the bible talks about my husband is the head of me but there's an authority that i bring to the house with the that children is absolutely yeah. necessary to create an atmosphere of peace and tranquility and a refuge in my home and when i relinquish that authority to my husband little ways we do this by Oh, just wait till your dad, your dad gets home, you know? Um, he's never, gonna take care of it. Never done that. <laughs> and um, and just little things that as moms, we just relinquish that over. And instead of walking in the authority that God gave us as this partnership in marriage, um, leadership, authority in our homes, mm -hmm. um, our job as, as wives is to create an atmosphere. Like that's a pretty powerful, assignment from heaven yeah shaping hearts of lives that mm. will eventually go out into the world and Powerful. i have we have five of the most amazing beautiful wonderful mm -hmm. children ever one is a worship director here where we're living in new york 
One is headed off to college. <laughs> oh my gosh, so crazy and scary. Headed off to college, but still living at home. Yeah. Um, and then three of them are still in grade school. Yeah. But um, but my responsibility as a mom to shape a little heart, to create an atmosphere in our home that leads them into peace and hope and value and yeah. knowing who they are. And also teaching our children that without a strong marriage, there is not enough love for them there really won't be yeah. so just the same way you were talking about how if your relationship with God is not strong enough you're not going to live out that life that you need to live to have enough love for your wife that's right it's the same way our love as a husband and wife not strong enough um will not have enough love for our children it yeah. creates a disarm disharmony and disorder and this so. is one of the only examples in the Bible that you have a relationship that reflects the relationship that we as the church, we as the people of God have with Jesus. So good. Our union with him because yeah. of his love and because of what he has accomplished through his life and his death and resurrection. And, and it's just powerful to think about that. And so if we think about that, even in, in the way that we evangelize to the world or us being the family of God, Without his love and without what, what Jesus has done, we can't we can't yeah, do that. Yeah. And so out of the union, mm -hmm. out of the, the sweetness of our love in a marriage overflows so good. to everyone else. Yeah. Um, and it, it's just a powerful thing. So now there's a there's a confusion though with this word headship. Mm -hmm. Headship does not mean domineer. Headship does not mean I have authority in a way where I am authority does not equal control. Mm -hmm. Authority should equal um, protection, uh, releasing, cultivating, yeah. loving, yeah. providing. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah, so this good. is a powerful dynamic because, and there, there's a beauty of the gender role. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a beauty of where a, a woman is feminine for a reason and a man is masculine for a reason. And there's this unity and that beauty of diversity so where, at, and some things you're way better at than me and some things I'm good at. That maybe you're not so good at, mm -hmm. and and so we find our place. But being being the head does not necessarily mean being a better leader, right? So yeah. Let's let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Help people understand the misconception of this. There is a there's a difference between headship and leadership, and we always try to put them as the same. I think. And um, why don't and, you share real quick a, a really good book for people oh, mm -hmm. that when you have two individuals in a marriage that are strong leaders? Yes. Yeah. So we're very, like, we're both very pretty strong in our personalities. And, and so um, sometimes, you know, we're navigating <laughs> that in, in a marriage. Almost 21 years of marriage, yes. though. Come on, somebody. Yeah. This September, 21, yeah, 21 years. years. Um, and I love you more today than I ever have. Likewise. And every day is like that. Yeah. And it can be like that. You better stop. I'm going to kiss you right now. Stop. We're on the thing. Here. Let's okay. keep going. Yeah. So um, one of the things that we've learned from our spiritual parents, Larry and Debbie Titus, they wrote yeah. a book called When um, Leaders Lead Together or When Leaders Live, Live Together. together. Yeah. And so I just recommend that if you're, especially Powerful. if you're, um, if you both have strong personalities or maybe the wife is a little bit stronger of a personality, how does that function biblically how does that appropriate uh, right. in a relationship where you reading still... the scripture in exactly. Ephesians 5 exactly. and the difference they unpack um, the whole book is really a, an important dynamic of the yes. marriage and the husband being the head and the husband releasing the wife yep. and her calling and gifts and uh, and although we might have different um, leadership qualities yes. There still is the headship role yep. of the husband. Yep. Biblically, it's powerful. And it's a safe place for um, me as a wife mm. to understand that I I give up a little bit of that. I give up that headship to my husband because that's his responsibility. So I answer to my husband, but he answers to God. <laughs> so I feel a little bit safer than yeah. you, babe. Yeah. <laughs> but headship actually means giving somebody direction protection mm. and release so good and that's so liberating yeah. because we can both lead in different ways but understanding that the same way that jesus gives his church headship yeah he gives the church direction protection and release is the same way a husband can do for his wife and there's only one head that's it there's only one head yeah. 
Yeah. Two heads make a monster. Yeah. I mean, that's just the reality, right? And this is the the dynamic. And when uh, when we realign, we got mm-hmm. we have to understand this. This is our point number one. We only have three. We got to get going to the okay. next one. Yes. But when we realign our hearts, yield it to the love of God, yeah. and we yield our hearts to one another, we submit to one another the fear of the Lord. And that proper submission in a marriage um, is a healthy submission, mm-hmm. not a subservient submission. Yeah. It's a healthy submission. And it's easy to submit to one another when we're looking out for one another, when the self giving, um, other centered love is flowing yes. from our hearts to, towards one another. It's powerful, yep. but realignment is absolutely necessary. Absolutely. We ha- we have to learn to to you know be humble yes. in this thing together yep. in any relationship. And you might not be married, and you're watching this, but this is very important mm-hmm. stuff uh, for the future, or even just for your relationship. Just it's really the posture of our hearts. Yeah. We can't be afraid yes. to be vulnerable and uh, and transparent in a relationship. Humility and teachability are two values that we can never underestimate, um, especially in and every walk in our life, but in our marriage. Sometimes it just takes a minute for you to say, you know what? In humility, I'm going to hear. I'm going to listen. Mm. I'll open up my heart. Yeah. You see things differently, mm-hmm. but we're headed in the same direction. That's right. That's right. So, and, and we can talk a little bit more about yeah. that because... Um, I think that's important. Let's just touch on it since you said it. Um, seeing that that beauty of diversity, we're going to go to point number two, which is restoration. Um, we could also call this reconciliation, mm-hmm. but there needs to be a restoration of marriages. I want to read a promise from the Old Testament, um, the last verse, in fact, of the Old Testament in Malachi chapter four, or Malachi if you're Italian. Um, Malachi chapter four. And we're going to read verse six. And so this is a promise that the minor prophet is giving. And, uh, and and this is powerful because he talks about the spirit of Elijah will come. And, uh, and, and I will send you Elijah the prophet. And it, here's what it says in verse six of Malachi four or Malachi chapter four. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers mm. to the children. Mm. And the hearts of the children to to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. So he says, the spirit of Elijah will come. And we see this fulfilled. John the Baptist was a type of Elijah. Yeah. And he prepared the way of the Lord. He said, I must decrease so that he can increase. John 3.30. This is John the Baptist speaking. The one who baptized Jesus, ushered in the very ministry of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Now in Jesus, this is fulfilled. Christ is the restorer. So Christ is the one who reconciles it. Christ is the one who teaches us what love is. He teaches us what forgiveness is. Mm-hmm. He teaches us what it means to love our enemies. And when we experience restoration in relationships, and, and this is for families, this is for marriages, and let me just, let me testify right now. How many marriages have we seen restored by the hand of God? Oh my gosh. I mean, it doesn't, I don't care what happened. Yeah. God can restore a marriage and he can restore a relationship. And sometimes we let silly little things get in the way in any relationship. You know, yeah. we, we'll quote scriptures like in Romans chapter eight, where it says, neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any created thing can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And we will amen that scripture forever. But how many know nothing can separate us from God's love, but how many times do we allow little things to separate each other from the love that we have for one another? And when we receive the love of God, Jesus in Christ, this scripture is fulfilled. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children of the fathers. The restoration, prodigal sons and daughters coming home, so restoration of marriages. Yeah. And it, what does it take? Realignment, mm. turning our hearts. And then we begin to see that restoration and that reconciliation. So good. And when a, re- when a relationship is restored, it's so sweet. Mm. And I mean, we've experienced this in our own lives after 21 years of marriage, nearly 21 years. You know, there, there's times where relationships get tough and you have to learn to reconcile. You have to learn to forgive. You have to learn 
And, and uh, honey, let's talk about new beginnings for just a minute. Yeah. Let's talk about what it means to just wipe the slate clean. Maybe mm -hmm. there's some people watching, not just in their marriage, but maybe in a father-son relationship or mother-son or mother-daughter or whatever, father-daughter, uh, or just friendship. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's uh, the family of God. Maybe it's church hurt. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about new beginnings. Receive this new beginning in your life. Yes. I'm, I don't know about you. I can feel wind on Come this. On. And the wind of the spirit, the Jesus. heart of God is breathing, or the, the breath of God is breathing right now. And his heart is beating uh, for this particular thing. Yes. Uh, because we need to pray for new beginnings. Yes. We need to pray for our hearts to turn towards mm -hmm. one another. Yeah. And you know what's interesting? Sometimes we'll, we'll even throw it on the other party. Like, well, you know, they'll, if they, I, I've been here the whole time. So, you know, if they turned away from me, it's on them. No, sometimes God wants us to pursue. Yeah. If we're turned towards somebody... And then it's it's it takes two right. you know two it's roles, right. and so we're to turn towards one another. So good. But let's talk about new beginnings. So you know we we can quote scripture like the mercies of God are new every morning, and if you lo actually look at that in context, it's it's like the mercies of God are available for every breath. Mm, come on. And the grace of heaven never stops flowing and flooding towards yeah. us. And sometimes we're able to receive forgiveness from God, but then we're not able to turn around and give that to people. Mm -hmm. And over and over in scripture, you see parables of, you know, somebody who's been forgiven much and then holds a debt yeah. that's really <laughs> small against another person. Yeah, um, so good. And I think of even the prodigal son story, you know, the father chased the son once he saw the son in, his, uh, in the distance of his sight. And, and just understanding that, forgiveness wiping the slate clean is so important in our relationships yeah i cannot hold people accountable over and over and over for what they did i have to release and let go for the sake of my so heart good. for the sake of my own heart even in the lord's prayer it says forgive as we forgive those who have for you used to quote it yeah, Lord, forgive us of our sins as we as forgive we those. Now, in the Aramaic, mm -hmm. which was probably what Jesus was speaking when, when he actually said it. Let me show you how to pray. Abba, Father. And then he says, in the Aramaic, it's so powerful. It's like instead of saying, let we forgive the sins of those that have sinned against us. Uh, and so forgive us as we forgive those. It's unleash the cords that bind us mm. as we unleash the cords that we've bound others with wow so that's good. powerful so powerful this is why when jesus said the spirit of the lord is upon me he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and proclaim liberty to the captive sometimes we hold one another captive so with unforgiveness so good. and we held ourselves in this cage yes. of unforgiveness and we may not realize, but this cage we've built with all these spears mm. that we formed out of our own bitterness and, and hurt. And, and these spears we meant for other people, but it doesn't work. Yeah. It only hurts us. It only encages us. And so it's like, forgive us as we forgive those so that have sinned against us. So powerful. That's what we're talking yeah. about, right? Yeah. yeah. Just the power of forgiveness. So good. The power of letting go. You know, in, in a marriage. Remember that song, Breathe Again? Yeah. <laughs> so good. So good. Talk about that when you're done. Um, in the pa I just think about the power that we have in a marriage and in our relationship with our spouse. You know, um, I think about the, the things that God has forgiven of me. The things that he's a lot. released. A lot. No, when I come it. to his presence. <laughs> when I come into his presence and I think... Mm. You've you've lifted every burden. Mm. You've destroyed every yoke. There's a scripture that says, "You see me holy and blameless." Come on. We have in our forgiveness, in our ability to in our relations with the people to have them feel that exact same way. So good. I release you of anything that I might hold against you. And it's just this powerful, powerful picture of what we've been forgiven of and what God forgives us of and how we can release other people. 
Now, you were mentioning the Lord's Prayer. You know, it's interesting. In one sense, that was fulfilled in one sense. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you read Ephesians 4.32, it says, Be kind and compassionate to, towards one another, forgiving each other just as Christ in God has forgiven you. Wow. So I'm going to walk in forgiveness because I've been forgiven. So good. Because his blood yeah. has washed me whiter than snow, because he sees me and loves me, now I can forgive and I can see and I can love. So good. Yeah. It's so profound. That's beautiful. And that's the new beginning. Yeah. That's the restoration. Yeah. Um, let's read that scripture in, in 2 Corinthians, can you? Yep. Uh, let's find it here on your Bible app. So we're going to read a scripture, and this is this is a really powerful verse about relationships and open heartedness. Maybe you're you're listening to some of this, like I can't have a new beginning. I don't know if I can see restoration because we've shut our heart off. Mm -hmm. Now listen, that doesn't mean that we need to be friends with people that have hurt us, but we can still forgive. That's right. It's one thing to see restoration in a, in a relationship, and 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 it's another to love our enemies from a distance. It's okay to set boundaries. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But if there's relationships that are with loved ones in, in a marriage, you know, we want to believe God for restoration. Mm -hmm. And this is a really good verse that talks about how to open our hearts. And this is Paul speaking. Yeah. You want to read it, baby? Sure. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And we're going to start reading at verse 11 uh, in the Passion Translation. My friends at Corinth, our hearts are wide open to you and we speak freely holding nothing back from you. If there is a block in our relationship, it is not with us. For we carry you in our hearts mm. with great love, yet you still withhold your affection from us. So I speak to you as our children. Make room in your hearts for us as we have done for you. So good. So good. And then he, start, he starts talking about not to be bound together with unbelievers yeah. or in harmony with toxic people. Yeah. Yeah. And so he, Paul talks about these powerful dynamics of bonding and harmony. Um, that could be a whole message in mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's, let's just seal this moment with the second portion, restoration. We pray for restoration and reconciliation as there's realignment in relationships. And so that's really powerful. What's one of the next things that you see uh, in a relationship being, you know, uh, being restored? What happens? So, you know, we have these places in our, in our relationships where we have conversations and sometimes conversations in a marriage turn into arguments and sometimes, sometimes rarely. Not with us. We never, turn into fights. we never argue. Never. That's not true. No, it's okay. <laughs> um, but what is, I feel like what's really important to create this atmosphere of restoration, restoration in a relationship is to have open communication and have a safe place to talk. Yeah, that's good. In your marriage. It's so good. To have um, a place where you can be honest and mm -hmm. share your heart. Right. Where defenses are down mm -hmm. and we're not accusing each other. That's the um, key right there. That's it. I don't take it personal and I don't make it personal. Yeah. So that's a key to having a safe place is I'm not going to make it personal or take it personal. So yeah. if I'm if I'm sharing my heart I didn't feel valued when you said this. This grieved me. Yeah. She doesn't take it personal, and I don't make it personal. I don't take that pain and form a dagger and think, how can I um, get her back? Yeah. It's never about retribution. It should always be about repentance mm -hmm. and reconciliation. Yeah. And so we don't take it personal, we don't make it personal. And I think that's such a high value in all relationships, is just learning how to communicate assertively, yeah. you know? Um, just being honest and saying you're valuable enough for me to say that this hurt me and I yep. want to have a relationship with you. Right. And I'm valuable enough to not push it down and let it create issues in my own heart where now I become an aggressive person or, you know, a, a wounded Outburst person of or wrath. outburst. Yeah. Right. Or awesome. a passive aggressive person that doesn't say anything, but they tell everyone else or they just post it on Facebook. And that never happens. Yeah. Not, even, not to Christians. Anyway. But this is a dysfunctional way of relationship that yes. we need to unlearn. Yep. We should have open heartedness and be able to communicate yes. in an honest way where it's not aggressive and fierce, like where there's harm and anger, but we're just open hearted and it's powerful. In a marriage, we've learned this is really important 
because then there's that open line of communication and then we, we grow from it yep. and we're not uh, defensive about it. <laughs> and we don't let things build up and harbor in our hearts that create mm. that disunity. We don't allow space. So good. You know, we and marriages sometimes it's years and years of brick walls and you're just been building walls. Or pushing things down and to where it like becomes a volcano. Yeah. And it's instead destructive. You, instead you don't create space. Make it so that there's no space between us. Yeah. There's nothing unsaid. There's nothing right. untalked about. We yeah. talk and say everything so we need to say. Yeah. So I, I when you said that I thought of the verse where um, I think it's right here in Ephesians 4, actually. He says, be angry and do not sin. Do not mm. let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. So good. Now, in the context, he's talking about uh, loving one another, not lying to one another, but speak truth. So Isn't good. that powerful? It's powerful. And he says, speak truth. We're members of one another. And then if you get upset, which you might, doesn't necessarily mean it's sin to be angry, but it depends on where we allow, if we allow our anger to, to be an outburst of wrath. Um, but he says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Mm -hmm. In other words, make it right. Don't, don't let there be a, a distance, yep. but stay close. Uh, and don't allow the enemy to have any grip, any place, any foothold, any stronghold in, in a relationship. So powerful. So good. Mm -hmm. So now we've talked about realignment and restoration. Now let's talk about the third uh, aspect to this, which is release. Yes. And if you're watching this online, type in the comment section, release. Now let's talk about the, the first thing, released into freedom, mm -hmm. freedom in relationships, free to be you, Yes. free to be known and to know. Yes. Powerful. So good. So powerful. As his daughter, Yes. you are free to be his daughter. And in the marriage dynamic, I want to see you fly. Mm. I want to see you released into freedom. Now, what does freedom mean? Freedom does not mean do whatever I want to do. Freedom means do what I was created to do. In in modern day society, we would think, well, freedom means like, you know, I can just do whatever I want, right? But how many, like we know, we teach our children this. No, yeah. Freedom is you do what you're created to do. That's right. yeah. Let's talk about that yeah, for a little I bit. Love that. I, love, I love what happens in a healthy marriage when you release your spouse to fly and mm. to walk in the call that God has called that so God good. has given them. You're and supporting it. Yeah, you're lifting yeah. them up. Yeah. You know, I even see this picture even in the scripture when it talks about the way that Jesus treats and loves the church and that's the way a husband is supposed to treat and love their wife. And you see this picture about God's not trying to stop or stifle or hinder the growth of his church. Come on. God doesn't try so to put good. his church in a box. Yeah. Jesus is not trying to put his bride like, no, you can't do this. You can't do this. He liberates his bride. That's right. He calls his bride, his, his, the glory to of his To be glorious, yeah. to be nurtured, to be uh, glorious. And, and what does Paul say? He says that, that he would present a glorious, glorious church, church without spot or blemish. A, a church that is shining. Mm -hmm. And you can tell when there is freedom in a marriage, like what we're talking about, because the wives, they shine. Mm -hmm. The countenance. That's why you're glowing. I'm glowing. Yeah, but I'm not perfect. <laughs> but there is, a, there is a release of freedom. There yeah. is a go and fly. Yeah, be who so God powerful. made you to be. And it's really, really powerful. Let, I want to read this scripture in Genesis. This is a really powerful truth that we're talking about release. Okay. We're talking about freedom to fly. Um, you could probably share the story about Sarah and the word that we mm. gave her about Sarah fly. Yes. Share that real quick. And then I want to read this verse. Yeah. And then we'll talk about the scriptural principle of this. So our oldest daughter is um, a worship leader and she's very anointed and at a very young age. And so we're really, really proud of her and, and her heart. But her dad is a couple years her ago. number one cheerleader and we are her biggest fan. But because, you know, you're a worship leader, you've really put in our daughter this this heart to just be who God has made her to be. Well, she used to leap in your womb she did. to worship. She did. I mean, God just wired her that way. It's who yeah. she is. It's amazing. Yeah. And so he's 
she's like, Sarah, she'll, you know, a few years ago, she was starting to lead worship and she's a little timid and he's like, fly. Like there's nothing stopping you. Just be who God made you to be. Come on, come on. Don't let anything clip your wings. Don't yeah. let anything keep you down. Come Just on. Just soar with God. And so. Speak that over people watching okay. right now. Maybe there's relationships that have clipped our wings. Mm. Maybe we, with our words and actions, yeah. have clipped someone else's wings. God have mercy. Jesus. And we need to repent. Yep. And we need to see restoration. Yeah. And we may need, maybe we need to tell somebody, hey, I feel like you're clipping my wings. Mm. That's okay to have that honest conversation. Yep. But speak that again. I just yeah. felt the wind of the Spirit yeah. when he said that. Fly. Do what God created you to do. Um, you know, the first time I ever, I remember feeling like my unforgiveness was hindering somebody else's freedom. The conviction that came in my heart was so overwhelming that I had nothing else. I had to release it. So we have to release that. But I'm just going to release this over every person. Mm. God never, ever intended you to live in a box, to live Come bound, on. to live um, to live in a place where you weren't able to soar and fly and be Whew. everything he created you to be. That's right. And so if there's relationship hurt, if there's wounds, church hurt, if there's um, words, I'm, mm. I can't even tell Tags, you how many times labels. words and labels have boxed me in as a person mm -hmm. but I just want to break all of that off of anybody that's watching and yeah. I want you to know God created Shh. you to fly he created Shut you up, to up, soar up, up, up. with eagle's wings yeah fly and be yeah. who he's made you to be so good. there's freedom in knowing who God is there's freedom released when we put our hope and our trust in him there's freedom in so knowing good. how much he loves us and releases us and into our destiny. Rochelle, your words are the wind beneath my wings. <laughs> <laughs> I just ruined such a <laughs> profound moment. No, it's good. But that's, that's real though. It is. Our words can either lift someone up into yeah. freedom. My words, if they honor who you are and they value who you are yeah. and they speak life, because we all know death and life is in the power of the tongue. Yeah. And those who love it will eat of its fruit. I can speak words of honor that literally empower you into freedom, mm. empower you into your destiny. So good. Ephesians 4.29 says, it says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but only that which is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Yes. We can impart grace with our words. Yeah. Your words are the wind beneath my wings. <laughs> and my words should be the wind underneath your wings. Yeah. Metaphorically, of course, we don't have wings, but God wants us to fly. Now, this is his heart for us. Mm -hmm. I want to read this yeah. powerful. I was doing a devotion one time, and the Lord gave me this revelation in, um, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 20. Okay, God's creating everything out of nothing. And he's creating the plants, and he's creating everything in the heavens and, and on the earth. And, and the plants are are uh, propagating and growing and multiplying. Uh, and, then he, and then he says here in verse 20, then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures. Mm -hmm. So now living creatures are created. Mm -hmm. The first time in the Bible we see living beings are created, mm -hmm. okay? Now we're talking about animals. They're not made in the image and likeness of God, but check this, he says, and let the birds fly above the earth and across the face of the heavens. Mm. Here's what's profound about that. God says, let the waters abound with creatures, okay, fish, all the things that swim in the ocean, and then let the birds fly. This is a fingerprint and a mark of God's nature and how he created in mm. his created order. He says, he didn't say, bird, I want you to just fly right over here over by this field. He said, no, bird, let the birds fly. Do what you're created to do so without limitation and without hesitation. Yes, That's a fingerprint of God. He, the first creatures he created he, were birds and things that swim in the, in the vastness of the ocean. Wow. In the vastness of the heavens. Wow. There's freedom. Yes. There's freedom to soar. God does not want, he doesn't want you limited. Matter of fact, when you were saying that, I want to say this. Any word that has ever been spoken to any of you 
that is not from God, I pray that it falls off and has no authority over you in Jesus' name. Yeah. We break the power of every word curse, of every word that is contrary to the heart of God for you right now in Jesus' name. Don't hear it anymore. Mm. Hear his voice mm. so that you can soar, so that you can be released into your destiny and your calling. So good. So profound. Yeah. Genesis 120, God says, let the fish swim in the vastness of the ocean and let the birds fly. That's a fingerprint of God so in his good. nature. How much more for us who are created in his image and likeness mm. to have dominion, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, to do what we're created to do. Amen. So good. Amen. So you want to close with this verse? Just quoted it a minute ago. Ephesians 4.29. Yeah. So Let's good. talk about number three on there okay. and we'll close with that. Okay. This is a powerful revelation. And let's end with uh, the understanding of what God's grace is. And then Amen. we'll close it out in prayer. Amen. I hope you've been enjoying this so far. It's been 41 minutes. And uh, we're going to be closing it out. Uh, but we love you. We bless you. Let's talk about what it means to be released, to be a powerful person. I think this is something that's so important for um, our relationships. Every single relationship we have is to take ownership and responsibility over the way I feel and over my own emotions. I'm a powerful person. Self-control is a fruit of the Spirit. It is. One of the most probably underrated fruits of the Spirit. Yeah. Especially in our current days. Mm. Um, we get offended and triggered and need our safe spaces over the smallest things. Right. I mean, our, this, our current climate right now and our culture is... Mm. What we are doing is we're creating an opportunity for people to not choose to be powerful. Right. What to, you, to remain in fear. Yes. What everybody else does makes it my, it determines my happiness, my joy, and my outcome. And I just want to encourage you and especially mm. encourage us as Christians. This should not be the way that we live our life. We Come are on. powerful human beings that yeah. were created with a, an ability to have self-control. That is so what good. Jesus gave us. That means I don't have to be offended if I don't agree with you. So good. That's right. I don't have to take offense if you say something that's offensive. That's right. I don't have to get triggered, angry, upset if <laughs> you do something that I don't like. And it creates an opportunity for me to take responsibility for my own heart, my own actions, the way I live my life. I am responsible. Nobody else is responsible for me. I'm responsible for me. That's it's, right. I, this is That's what right. I tell my children. It's so good. She did this, so I feel this way. No. You're choosing to feel a certain way. Or you made me angry. Nobody can make you feel any way. Nobody can make you choose a response. That's right. You're responsible for the way you respond and other people are responsible for the way they so respond. So good. And that is, like we talk about in our current climate, a lot of people, and I will say this, beware of political leaven. Jesus said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. Yeah. And uh, that's why I don't watch the news mm -hmm. because I don't allow political leaven to dictate my speech or influence my thoughts how I see the world, so good. but I wanna yield my heart to the Lord where I say your kingdom reign, the reign of your love over everything, yes. and then I can reign in life yeah. and I can display what it looks like to be powerful, yeah. what it looks like to be responsible. Yes. God wants us responsible for what he has given us in our sphere, yeah. of our in our metron, and that means that I'm responsible for me, you're responsible for you. That means I'm not gonna to try to control you and you're not going to try to control me. Yeah. And there's subtle ways this pans out. But God wants us to be released into freedom where we're not operating in this fear. Yes. And, and trying to, you know, um, control people by creating an atmosphere where you have to walk on eggshells lest you offend me and I get angry. Right? Amen. And, and this, so is, this is so toxic. Is. And we need to be free from this. Yeah. God wants us to be responsible. Powerful. Amen. A powerful person. A powerful person. Yeah. Freedom that I do whatever I want to do because it's what I feel like mm. doing. Come on. 
is what creates an, an environment where I get to be victim to my circumstances and I don't have to rise up. See, there's a difference between yeah. the freedom that God gives us, which is we take ownership and responsibility for the life that we're living. So good. If you're living a life that that is not bringing you hope and grace and peace, and you continue to do the same thing over and over and over again and live in that life that is not bringing you hope and grace and peace, then it, you are your own worst enemy. Right. Powerfulness, so when we talk about it in the scriptural way, when we talk about the liberty and the freedom that God has given us, is the liberty and the freedom to say, does it matter what, what my circumstance looks like? I know who God is and what he's given me authority over. And I have authority over my emotions. Yeah. I have authority over... Come on. Um, that's right. My my emotions do not dictate how I respond. I mm. dictate how I respond. That's right. Because self control, and so and it's a choice. It is a choice. And we have to make powerful choices. Yes. And we can't just like you know blame demons <laughs> or blame the president or blame society for everything. We cannot blame. We have to understand. We are responsible for us yes. and we have to make a decision of our will to rise up and overcome Amen. in situations. I may have been victimized. I may have been through tough times, but I don't have to think that way anymore right. because I'm more than an overcomer in Christ. Right. I'm the head and not the tail. Yes. I'm above only and not beneath. Come on. And so there's this power, this spirit of an overcomer. When we receive God's yes. grace, we become powerful. Yep. Grace empowers us to be released into freedom. So good. And we make choices. It's just, Sometimes it's a decision though, like mm -hmm. sometimes I'm indecisive about certain things and you help me. Yes. And sometimes you're indecisive about certain things and I help you. But I've learned that sometimes my indecisiveness comes from a place in my heart I have chosen not to be powerful. Wow. Where God deals with me. He says, just make a choice. Mm. Make a decision. Well, I don't know if I want to, eh, and we go through things in our mind. God's like, make a choice and stick to it. So good. Like, well, I need to lose weight or I need to do that. And we do it all the time. Yeah. No, you're powerful. Rise up in life, overcome, reign in life, make a decision. So good. And it's, it's a choice though. It is a choice. And you're powerful. Amen. We're powerful. Yep. We're empowered by him. And the Holy Spirit gives us self-control so that we can live the way we're created to live. So good. I want to read this, this scripture here, honey, and then let's pray for the people and close it out because we've been going for it. Uh, uh, this is Romans chapter five and Paul, Romans five through eight. It's all about the finished work of Jesus, the grace that he's given us, his righteousness. And here's what he says about the grace of God that came through Jesus. Verse 12 of Romans five in the New King James. Therefore, just... Just as through one man sin entered the world, Adam, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sinned. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong verse. Verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and of, and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life so through the one Jesus Christ. Wow. If I receive the abundance of grace, do we have a poverty mindset mm. with when it comes to God's grace? Mm. God's grace, you know, the, the language that he uses is like the priest coming in and receiving the best cuts of sacrifice. God provides the sacrifice. He did provide the sacrifice, Jesus. Yeah. And through Christ, we receive an abundance of grace, like a huge waterfall or a tsunami or a, a, an ocean crashing, waves crashing into us, the power of God and the gift that he says, you're righteous, mm. not just accredited, but imparted as it's part of your nature now. So good. Now righteousness is produced out of you. And through that grace, that empowerment, we become powerful and released to reign in life in Christ Jesus, Amen. to reign in life so good. over our circumstances. I thought of the story in John chapter five, I preached on this before, where it's the man who's paralyzed for I think 38 years. And he's at the pool of Bethesda, mm. where there's five porches, five is the number of grace. This is in John chapter five. And he's 
sitting there with all of the other people that need healing, Jesus comes up and he looks at him. He says, what do you want me to do? And he doesn't answer the Lord's question. He says, well, I just need someone to put me in the water and blah, 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 blah. Now it's interesting. It, the Bible doesn't really clearly say whether this was actually a, a belief that the angel would come and stir the water and the first one to touch, that it was something in the Hebrew culture. It doesn't really say that. A lot of people believe it was just superstition. Mm -hmm. What if we are so, we have such a victim mindset, we allow superstition and irresponsibility and over spiritualization to dictate our choices. Wow. When Jesus comes up and says, what do you want me to do? Just ask. And then Jesus tells him, take up your bed and walk. In other words, for 38 years, the thing that determined where you went and where you rested, now you determine where you rest and where you go. So Take up the thing that yes. had dominion over you. You reign in life. Rise up. He says, take up your bed and walk. So good. Rise up. I believe that if you listen, you'll hear the Holy Spirit say to you, rise up, be released. Be released into freedom in your marriage, in your relationships, in, in what God's called you to do. So good. Let's pray for him, honey. Yeah. Would you just Thank impart you, that? And let's close this wonderful time. I hope you were blessed today. Be encouraged. Dive into the scriptures. And we love you. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. For thank you, Lord. Right now. I thank you for the power of ta -da, overcoming. Ta -ta 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 -da -da uh, the so overcomer to just uh, fill every heart right now. Mm. There is the overcomer yeah. <laughs> that lives inside of us. Come on. He is an overcomer. Shandra and that power, that resurrection, resurrection power, power, lives inside right of now. every Give single life. one of us. And I pray it would rise up on the mm. inside. Jesus that we would name. be overcomers in life. Yep. We would be overcomers in our relationships. We would be powerful, free people that would yeah. be able to live out our destiny and set others free the same way that Jesus you name. have set us free. Yep. In Jesus we call name. forth faith in your heart, hope in your relationships. Jesus. Let it rise up in Jesus' name. And I, I just call forth those of you that feel like you are paralyzed by fear. You've been paralyzed by your past. You've been paralyzed by uh, words from other people. You've been paralyzed by past relationships. In Jesus' name, I say, rise up and take authority over the thing that, f that made you feel like you had to go wherever this thing went no more. Rise up and reign in life. Be free and do what God created you to do. And we declare, receive his grace. His grace is not just mercy. His grace is empowerment. empowerment. It's supernatural. Yeah. It empowers us yeah. to rise up in life so and live the way he created to me. Matter of fact, the Bible says this in Titus. It says that grace teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. In other words, grace empowers me to be free from sin. Grace empowers me to be free from dysfunctional things in relationships. Receive his grace and be free. Amen? Amen. Realignment, Amen. restoration, and release. We speak it over you. We love you. And we bless you bless in Jesus' name.